The Many Worlds Interpretation of Quantum Mechanics was proposed in 1956 by Hugh Everett in an attempt to resolve the conceptual issues that arose from the measurement problem. In order to understand the controversy that his proposal caused, we first have to get a clear view of the accepted interpretation of the time. In this video, we will focus on the most popular one, the Copenhagen Interpretation. We begin with the discovery of what would become the foundation of quantum mechanics, a wave-particle duality. In 1925, Davison and Germer devised a double slit experiment. It went something like this. You fire an electron beam at a plaque with two slits. When only one of them is open, this happens. However, when both slits are open, something strange happens. It's as if the electrons passing through the slits knew when two slits were open instead of just one. The pattern formed is called an interference pattern, and is a typical behavior of waves. This was strange, as it was previously thought that an electron was just a particle, and the only logical explanation for these results was, and is, that electrons act as waves as well as particles. This is called the wave-particle duality. In order to understand what this wave represents, we first need to be aware of the fact that the quantum world doesn't behave the same way as a microscopic world. Particles, such as electrons, have a seemingly random behavior when measured individually, even if they have the same initial conditions and the same experiment is performed on them. This is seemingly nonsensical in the physical world, which is ruled by irregularities and patterns. However, the regularity in this case appears when the measurements are performed many, many, many times. In this way, we can talk not about the state of a particle, but of the probability of finding said particle at a specific location or at a specific quantum state. The wave function is then a probability function where the high points indicate the most likely places for the particle to be. In reality, wave functions describe the position of the particle via its quantum states. Each particle has a wave function associated, which can be plugged into an equation derived by Erwin Schrodinger in order to understand how it will change over time and make predictions. Here's where the classical interpretation of quantum mechanics runs into trouble. The Schrodinger equation predicts that the change of a wave function over time will be smooth and continuous. However, in reality, when an observer comes into contact with a quantum system, the wave function collapses and a single result is observed. This collapse of the wave function creates a discontinuity in Schrodinger's equation and is the main cause of the very famous measurement problem. The measurement problem refers to the fact that the evolution of the wave function in time is interrupted once a measurement is made by an observer. In other words, viewing a probability wave in its totality is impossible because the very act of observing it causes it to collapse and for the particle observed to coalesce at one definite position. So, while theoretically an electron can exist at various locations at the same time, each time we try to see this, the electron pulls itself together and appears at a single place, or quantum state. There are no mathematics that predict the collapse of the wave, which is why the Copenhagen approach had to be devised. Niels Bohr and his team at the Danish Institute of Technology developed the first quantum interpretation, hence the name Copenhagen Interpretation. The interpretation of Copenhagen is an approach very focused on the problem of measurement in quantum mechanics. This interpretation attempts to avoid the problem of measurement by establishing a strict separation between microscopic and macroscopic physics. Microscopic objects such as photons, electrons, atoms, and particles are governed by the rules of quantum mechanics, and the macroscopic flowers, planets, and people by classical physics. This theory proposes an absolute separation between both worlds and establishes that macroscopic objects will never behave in a quantum manner. Quantum measurement involves the interpretation of macroscopic measuring devices with a microscopic object and that interaction changes the state of the microscopic object. It is said that the wave function collapses into a simple state. According to Copenhagen interpretation, this collapse is a real change of the wave function. 
This will go from a dispersed quantum state with multiple possible measurement results to a state with a single value. The most extreme variants of the Copenhagen interpretation defend that the collapse requires not only a macroscopic measuring device, but also a conscious observer who carries out the measurement. That is to say that no action or event happens until someone looks at it. The idea of the collapse is a problematic since there is no mathematical formula capable of describing the collapse. Although the Schrodinger equation can be used to describe how a wave function changes between measurements, there is no way to describe the process of collapse. The only possibility is to choose the result and start over with a new wave function after the measurement. Despite his role in the creation of the quantum theory, Erwin Schrodinger found problems in this interpretation that led him to distrust the whole discipline. With the famous mental experiment of the Schrodinger cat, the Austrian physicist tried to illustrate that the interpretation of Copenhagen was absurd. The experiment consists of putting a cat in a closed box with a radioactive atom that had a 50% chance of deteriorating in an hour. If the atom deteriorates, a poussinous gas is released, and that will kill the cat. What will be the state of the cat at the end of the hour? As Schrodinger said, according to the Copenhagen interpretation, the wave function will describe the cat alive and dead at the same time, until the experimenter opens the box and the function collapses into one of the two states. Very few scientists were totally satisfied with the Copenhagen interpretation. Many alternatives have been proposed to try to find a more satisfactory way of dealing with the problem of quantum measurement. In this work, we will focus on what is commonly known as the theory of multiple universe. Hugh Everett was a brilliant mathematician and quantum theorist. He introduced a new conception of reality to physics, many worlds theory. He invented a controversial quantum theory of multiple universes. He developed this theory when he was a student at Princeton University. At that time, he received a lot of criticism and reaction because his theory was considered unproductive. Actually, this theory is not universally accepted. The theory presages the concept of quantum the coherence, a modern explanation of why the probabilistic weirdness of quantum mechanics resolves itself into the concrete world of our experience. He suggested a solution to the problem of the collapse of the wave function. So Everett said that in reality there was no such collapse, but rather that the wave function involves at all the times and everywhere by following the Schrodinger equation, only that we are not able to see the full wave function of the universe. We only see a small part of this function, which is adapted to our scenario. Whatever it raises is that there is no such collapse in the wave function, since the wave function starts with a superposition of two probability parts of the position of an electron. There is not a collapse because the probability of finding the position of the electron expands exponentially and we cannot perceive the electron in multiple states at the same time. We obtain a random wave function between all the probabilities of the full wave function. That is why many world theory is based on this wave function, including that there are different scenarios in which completely different results are experienced that we can perceive. Besides this, it is established that none of the other parallel scenarios have influence about our results and events. In the same way, our results do not influence the other scenarios. These branches mentioned above are known as parallel universes which are inaccessible to our universe. The universe bifurcates each time a measurement is made and through these acts, new parallel universes are generated that can be slightly different to our universe. The decoherence comes from while these multiverses remain separated and prevents the different branches of the wave function from interacting with each other. While each branch is associated with an observer who can only perceive his own. After Everett's multiverse theory was practically rejected and ignored, he followed an entrepreneurial career. Then, the wit appeared as his most devoted champion with the Wheeler the Wit equation. Bryce Seligman de Wit was a theoretical physicist best known for formulating canonical quantum gravity 
for formulating the, the Wheeler DeWitt equation for the wave function of the universe with John Archibald Wheeler and for advancing the formulation of the Hugh Everett Many Worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. The wit resolved to correct this situation and in 1970 wrote a popular article in Physics Today expounding Everett's views. But how does this equation help the cause of Hugh Everett? First, we start with the most known Schrodinger equation. h bar squared divided by 2m multiplied by the double derivative of the wave function with respect to space plus the functional potential multiplied by the wave function equals i h bar multiplied by the partial derivative of the wave function with respect to time. This equation can be written in the following form. h multiplied by the wave function equals i h bar multiplied by the partial derivative of the wave function with respect to time. Writing this equation in a generalized form would give this. I multiply by the partial derivative with respect to time of the wave function equals to h times the wave function. The different thing would be that this time the coordinates of the wave function would not be space and time only. It would be n, q, theta, theta tested, and t where the h corresponds to the Hamiltonian operator in extended space, n corresponds to the gauge variable given by a function of q plus a constant, q refers to physical things, theta and theta tested correspond to Fadib and Popov ghosts and t is time. It is important to note that these Fadib and Popov ghosts represent additional fields that maintain consistency in the path integral in order to obtain the solution for the equation. From this form of the Schrodinger equation, this general solution is obtained. The wave function of n, q, theta, theta tested, and t is equal to the integral of the wave function k of q and t multiplied by the Dirac function of n minus function of q minus k multiplied by theta tested plus i multiplied by theta dk. The phi chi function describes the state of the physical subsystem for a fixed reference frame and it is a solution to i multiplied by the partial derivative of phi chi of qt with respect to t equals h phi multiplied by f multiplied by the wave function k of q and t. Choosing gauge conditions n equals to 1 and n i equals to 0, the last equation would result in the wheeler dewitt equation. h w d w multiplied by the wave function of q equals 0, where the Hamiltonian operator is equal to minus the tensor g with index i, j, k, and l multiplied by a double partial derivative with respect to h with index k and l and then with respect to h, i, and j minus the square root of h to the third power multiplied by r all of this multiplied by phi of h with index i, j equals zero where g is the DeWitt metric or 5 plus 1 dimensional metric. The proposition of this equation may lead to the thinking of universe branching.